I saw this video that the Foo Fighters put out on their YouTube channel about Dave Grohl explaining the history and the conception of Everlong. Everlong. So I just wanted to give this video some more exposure and examine some of Dave Grohl's songwriting techniques. I think he's an amazing songwriter and overall musician, so I think there's a lot to learn here. And I also think it would be cool to potentially impact the future songwriter of the next ever long. This song was huge. It still is. It's one of my favorite songs ever. And sometimes all it takes is a little bit of inspiration to unlock that songwriting piece inside of you. So uh, let's press play. Hi, I'm Dave Grohl from the Foo Fighters. Hey Dave. And I'm going to tell you the story of our song Everlong. Everlong was written I think in 1996, probably in the winter of 96. Little known fact, songs written in the winter time are always the best songs. I have no facts to back that up. If you've ever been in a studio with a band for a long period of time and you're recording multiple songs, there's a lot of time just sort of sitting around waiting for something. Yeah, setting up the drums, miking the, it's always the drums. So I was sitting in the isolation booth waiting to do a take of another song and I just started playing this chord. Now, I'm not a trained musician, so I don't know what that chord is. I don't know what you would call it. I found this in a lot of Dave Grohl interviews. Whenever he talks about guitar, he makes a point to say, I don't know how to play the guitar. <laughs> He's very self-deprecating in that way. Dave, you know how to play the guitar, man. I, I get the, uh, the not knowing what the chord is. Let's find out what that chord is. So it's... That's a D major seven. There's no fifth, but it's got the D. There's the major third. There's the major seventh. I can't read music. Hardly any guitar player can read music, that's okay. But I immediately was like, oh, that kind of sounds like Sonic Youth is the first thing I thought. One of my favorite bands of all time, Sonic Youth. I'm like, wow, that's such a cool Sonic Youth chord. So that's so funny, I do the same exact thing. If there's a chord that sounds like a band, I'm like, oh, that's the, the John Petrucci chord, for example. But this chord actually reminds me of 311, that stacked fifth sound. I kind of realized, oh, well I could do that as well. What's that chord? No clue. Don't know what it's called. <laughs> That's a B add nine or a B sus two, whatever you want to say. And then he moves down, this will be a G sus two or a G add nine. So all in all, it's... Those are some pretty sick chords to start with. Don't know anything about guitar. But I realize you can sort of move it around. And uh, so in between takes, I would just kind of mess around with this thing, you know, strum around with it. Now at the time, I was, uh, I was breaking up with a girl that I had been with for a Ding, ding, ding. All right, if you want to write a great song, how many great songs have been written as a result of breaking up with a significant other. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, go out there, find the love of your life, and then break it off. You're gonna write a great song, I assure you. The emotion or the feeling I got when I would play this succession of chords sort of touched on whatever that emotion was. Um, I think that's important, you know, as a man who is not allowed to feel <laughs> in society, you're supposed to be a tough man, right? Uh, it's okay to talk about emotions, especially with songwriting. It's sort of an intimate process, and if you play chords that makes you feel something inside, makes you well up a little bit, that's really awesome, and I encourage you to feel that way. And it's cool that he's kind of opening up like that. Now also, not to get too like meso-technical or whatever, because I'm not a trained guitar player, I actually- Before he even says anything, I bet you he's gonna say, I was thinking about this like a drum pattern. Look at this guitar, this instrument, like it's a drum set. So I look at the lower- I've watched a lot of Dave Grohl interviews. <laughs> strings like kicks and snares, and I look at the higher strings almost as if they're cymbals. So the pattern in which I'm strumming, the it's almost like a kick drum pattern, like do do da do da da do da do do da do da 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 like that. Pretty cool.
cool. So because of the emotional place I was in, I started writing the lyrics to this song. And, um, and they come from a real place. Lyrics coming from a real place. As with anything artistic, if it's authentic, then it'll usually connect with more people than if not. The song started to come together and I wanted to record it quickly so I didn't forget it. I had a friend named Jeff Turner. That's a good idea. So I always, if I come up with any sort of idea, whether it's a video idea or a riff or anything, I always make a point to record it as quickly as I can to preserve whatever magic that I think is there. Like, have you ever woken up from a dream or something where you heard this magical piece of music in your head and you're like, ah, I'll remember it. And then you go back to sleep and you have no idea what it was. I've had one too many of those occurrences, so I've always made a point to do just that. Record something as quickly as possible. That's a great, great strategy. Without having it fully formed, I just kind of went in. I put down a drum track. I put down the guitars and the bass, and I sang it into a microphone for the first time. It did seem to makes sense. The lyric and the melody at the time where I was uh, emotionally, I think that that's what songs should be. They should be something that um, not only the, the tone or the melody or, or dynamic of the instrumental, but also the lyric um, match in a way that it represents how you feel at that moment. I recorded the song and Good I brought advice. it back to the guys. I remember actually I played it for um, Thurston and Kim from Sonic Youth because I was definitely <laughs> afraid that I had just come, just totally like ripped off the Sonic Youth songs. I need to listen to more Sonic Youth. I don't just, really uh, get I that. Said, oh, listen to this thing I just recorded. And they listened. I, I said, listen to this demo that I did. And they said, uh, ah. Classic musician thing. Okay, it's not done yet. This isn't this isn't fully finished. You know, uh, it's, it's really raw. The guitar parts. You know, it's just thrown together. That's funny. Even somebody at the stature of Dave Grohl still like talks about it, just like a normal musician who is in their bedroom would talk to their friend. Like, okay, it's not done yet, but uh, it's just a universal thing. I totally relate to that. Why is that a demo? Why why should why isn't that the album? <laughs> and that's what everybody always says, dude, that sounds like legit. <laughs> and usually that's people just being nice to you. That's a demo? What? What's the real thing gonna sound like? That sounds like it's ready to go. So, sign of a good friend right there. It just felt so off the cuff and unofficial, I considered it to be a demo. And you know what's funny, David Williams, the guitar player who played on Billie Jean, the Michael Jackson tune, he did that like almost DI sounding clean part that's like that thing there. That's the demo recording. They tried to re record it after the fact and they couldn't match whatever mojo was in that take. So that's literally uh, the demo recorded guitar layered into all the tracks that they recorded after the demo. It definitely happens. I don't know what it is about sometimes when you record something off the cuff that you're not even paying attention to the tone or how you're recording it. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's the fact that you're not trying to dial anything in and it's just straight from the soul. Maybe uh, that's something to consider. Next time you're going to write some music, don't just start with the amazing tone. Just start with something bland and maybe if it sounds good on that blandness, maybe that's the final tone or maybe, you know, it'll sound even better when you do go to doctor it up. I never considered doing it um, acoustically. Mm -hmm. I thought it was a rock song until the, I think it was the first time we did the Howard Stern show. Howard Stern loved the song. He asked that I play it um, acoustically. Oh, this will be interesting. Yeah, see if I've you never had to do this acoustic. All right, well, let's try it's it. First time. So basically, Howard Stern is responsible for the Foo Fighters success. It gave this song kind of a whole new life because I think sometimes when I do it this way, it really does peel back a lot of the bells and whistles and the other noise when it's just the lyric and the guitar. Honestly, when I think of Everlong, I think of the acoustic version. And um, my voice, I think it, it kind of makes the song feel the way I had always wished it felt, so.
I'll shut up now. I love this intimate look into the songwriting process of one of the greatest songwriters of our generation. Doesn't matter if you don't know what the names of the notes are that you're playing. It doesn't matter how you think of the guitar, whether you think of it as a harp or a drum set or whatever. The authenticity of a human element infused with an instrument and of course the lyric writing side of things he didn't really get into that but he basically said i wrote down how i felt you don't have to necessarily be any more artistic than that sometimes the best lyrics are the ones that are the most simple and honest my favorite lyricists they kind of have the tendency to say things that you wish you could articulate but aren't necessarily difficult to say when you think about them, it's just like, oh, I was thinking that, why didn't I say that? That's really the key to lyrics that I've obviously not been able to master, but I understand. It's like, just say what you're thinking and don't try and be too cute or too metaphorical in the beginning phases, maybe the first pass through, just write down exactly what you're feeling. I mean, Eminem, I think, is one of the best rappers ever and he would literally just write journals of all his thoughts and then he would form songs from that but they all came from real long form thoughts in his head and I think that's a really great way to approach lyric writing and then when it comes to the music you know Dave was getting on to a point where the lyrics sort of blend into the music in a instrumental way I think that's really cool and that has to do with the vocal side of things. So all in all, great advice here. I hope it helps your songwriting. I'm going to end this video with a song that I've been working on. It's not close to being done. Let me get my little musician disclaimer in there. It's not done, but I will share it with you. It's just a few riffs that I've thrown together. I like the sound of it. It sounds nothing like Everlong, but it is something that I'm working on and it came out of thin air one day I was just sitting down strumming my electric guitar unplugged and I came up with this little melody and before I knew it I had this.